Let's talk about Arizona State now. Okay, we've moved from one Arizona school to the other. This is a very interesting team. This team, I mean, very much struggled last year. They went, what, 3-9? Uh, Kenny Dillingham, it was his first year. Okay. Yeah, they struggled on both sides of the ball. I'll say less so defensively. They actually put up a fight in some games, right? And they can't exactly control their offense, turning the ball over at will and giving the defense absolutely horrendous field position to work with. Because if you actually look at the metrics, like, sure, they let up a lot of passing yards per game, but, like, in terms of, like, yards per attempt, like, it, people just threw the ball a lot on them, right? Like, because they really couldn't run the ball that well. So... I kind of liked what I saw from the defense last year, given the talent and the injuries too, and the injuries. I mean, we know how good Jordan Clark was, but Jordan Clark, I believe he was fighting some injuries as well last year. So, but let's talk about the offense, right? Uh, Marcus Arroyo is in there this year. Okay. He enters the equation. He actually did wonders for that Oregon offense when he was over there in terms of the, like creating an explosive run game. And, if you're going to look at a part of Arizona State's game that needs to be very effective based on the talent in the room, your run game has to be very, very good. You have and multiple, so, and multiple. so many running backs. You have so many of them. You are going to have spellback over spellback over spellback. I think the hire of Marcus Arroyo is reflective of that. I think Kenny Dillingham understands what he... I know what Kenny Dillingham wants to do. I don't know if he can do exactly what he wants to do with the talent on this team, but I think he knows he has to run the ball well, and I think he knows that Marcus Arroyo potentially can get that done for him. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at that offensive line, with, with, by the way, like, the quarter position... It's not that I don't like Sam Levitt. It's just he's a redshirt freshman, right? And, and we'll see what happens there. But yeah, you mentioned the talent there in the running back room. I mean, if Kenny Dillingham, if you're going to win football games, right, you're going to run the football this year in the Big 12, which a lot of teams are, right? Cam Scadaboo, 5'10", 225. Scadaboo, stud. sorry. Scadaboo. Uh, yeah, sorry, there. thank you. Scadaboo, 5'10", 225, stud. To Carlos Brooks, red shirt senior. We love that, 5'10", 220. Very nice veteran depth for you. Relief Brown, highly rated, former highly rated high school guy, 5'8". 185. Like I said, multiple. X Factor alert. Let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. And Ultimate Caskill, too, by the way, who's just a couple years removed yeah. from being really, really good for Houston. And it's obviously, the, the true freshman, Jason Brown, probably won't play a ton, but I know Arizona State's excited about him. 5'8, 194. Love that. Um, so, yeah, that, like, like I said, I think what you mentioned, what he can do for the run game and maximize this room with all the different talents, maybe run one or two tight uh, running back sets, get Relique Brown in motion, Alton McCaskill, Cam Scadabo in the receiving game, whatever you can do to get touches to these guys and ease the life of Sam Levitt or whoever is the quarterback for you. And by the way, I'll throw in another, I'm not going to call it X factor, but wrinkle you can have Jeff Sims as an, another running back mm -hmm. body. Yep. 6'4", 220. I mean, I, I think the take that you, you bring in is obviously just to give veteran and, and another, you know, person in your quarterback room. But also, like, I think you plan to play him and, and running the football and what you can do with some wildcat packages, but also the option to throw the football as well, as assuming he holds on to the football. Yes. And we talked about this at Big 12, our Big 12 Media Day breakdown. So I'm, I'm going to assume that not everyone who's watching this video watched that video. If you haven't, you can check that out. But we did talk about Kenny Dillingham. He explicitly said when talking about the quarterback battle, he's like, look, uh, looking for a quarterback that can extend with his legs, right? But also takes care of the football. So that makes me believe that Sam Levitt is the guy. And I think the staff likes him and the beat writers like him as well. And I've heard players in interviews talk about him as well, and they speak very highly of him. However, he was buried... I know he was young, but, he, but he's buried behind some of those Michigan State quarterbacks that are maybe not as good either. Like, But the counterpoint to that is, right, just because the guy's young doesn't mean that he can't and won't make a step this year, right, in the right system, um, in the right environment, when given a chance in a game situation. 
Yeah, it's just, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, you 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 don't have you're you're literally gone with your entire quarterback room from last year. It's all gone. Yeah, Jason Borge. Well, oh, I thought Borge is still there. No, he's gone. Damn. See ya. See ya. You know where he's at? Actually, uh, Jason Borge is over at. Um, dang it, I've got it somewhere. See Baylor. Nope. Dang it. Come back to me. I'll figure it out. Oh, he's at BYU. Duh. He's at BYU with Jake Retzlaff and Gary Bohan. And he's not even going to start there. So that, oh, that's... wow. You're right. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, very, very interesting quarterback room there. Yeah, quarterbacks uh, need receivers to throw to. I don't know if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, obviously you got uh, Xavier Guillory, right? The guy used to was at, uh, I believe, Idaho State. Mm -hmm. He was a guy. I mean, th this room it was a it was a tough year offensively for you guys, right? I mean, Elijah Badger's gone, right? Jalen Connor's gone, right? Those are guys that were pretty good for you. Um, Cam Scadabo was your third leading receiver at two hundred eighty six yards. And he's a running back. Right, which is fine. I mean, it, it was just it was kind of in and out lineup with the quarterback position. You had a, a true freshman that you were kind of acclimating when he was healthy in Jaden Rashada. But yeah, you got Guillory, you got Troy Omiere, former Texas guy that 200 plus yards last year for you, three touchdowns as well. Um, Melquan Stovo as well. Uh Jake Smith, a guy that's there now who's former high recruit, been at you know, Notre Dame, Texas, USC all around. Uh, Jordan Tyson, uh, he's there. It's, I'm not going to say it's thin, but in terms of proven production, I, th I think you've got a lot of bodies in there that they don't mind throwing out there. But mm -hmm. like you said, in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the, the makeup of this offense, it's going to be through the run game. And, uh, if these guys, it I, I to hate be. to say it. It has to. Can be. you run block? Right, you bring up Malik Mc, Mc, uh, Malik McCain, uh, Malik McLean, right from IMG, right was also at Penn State and Florida State, six four two zero six. Get him out there and block, right? Run some go routes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can find ways to use these guys, and I think that Arroyo and Dillingham will. Um, but if you're talking about strengths of the offense, it's not going to be the wide receiver room. Definitely not. And when we talk about the run game being really effective, a eh? You know, rather important aspect of that is the offensive line, which was kind of decimated last year from injuries. I'll let you touch on the offensive line. What are your thoughts on these this offensive line going into next year? It's not ideal. I mean, what Max Inachor or Inachor, right? Former Juco guy at right tackle. We'll see um Sean Nana, right? I see his guy like uh young kid St. John Bosco he'll fit you know obviously you're still gonna have some growing pains like he did last year but um I think he'll he he could step in the right direction this year Ben Coleman's the guy that's been there for a while now or I'm sorry been in college football a while now former Cal guy uh you, you like him play Fontenot at center yeah I fine like player I think I think he's fine yeah yeah he was yeah he was pretty good for you last year and then Josh Atkins is the transfer that comes in from Houston right a fellow big 12 school as well We'll see. I, I do think uh, you're starting, you know, your first five are, you know, doable and definitely manageable. And I think with the, the ground and pound uh, style that you're going to be playing, that helps. The depth definitely concerns me, but you've got some bodies on this team, at least depth wise, that aren't freshmen and sophomores and, and yes. guys that you don't necessarily feel. You've got juniors, you've got seniors, grad students, right? And, and so at least you feel, um, with with like four years in the weight room, whatever it may be, a little bit more reliable than what you had last year. Yeah, certainly. And I will say though, there's some decent defensive lines on their schedule. A couple of them. Not a ton, but a decent amount. And some teams that have effectively stopped the run in the past. Does that necessarily mean they're gonna stop the run this year? I don't know. We'll see if Arizona State can accomplish running the ball. That's just going to be their biggest key. Like, because it's not going to be an explosive offense. It won't be, 
right? It's going to be, they're going to have to be physical and they're going to have to find ways to scheme open running lanes and block. That's really it offensively. That's going to be their key. And I, I, I would hope that Arizona State fans agree with us. If you don't, let me know, like, are there receivers that we're sleeping on that like, because, you know, I, I'm not at these spring practices. I'm not at these summer workouts. So if y'all have any sleepers for us, just let us know in the comments. But CD, okay, give one. To, how about the tight end position? I'm sorry, I didn't talk about them. Uh, Shaman um, Metayer, right? It's like I I like him, right? Six five two forty five. I think he's a nice receiving threat for you. Um, he comes in from Colorado this off season, but last year he was playing for Cincinnati. I thought he was one of the lone bright spots in that offense, and I do think a change of scenery was necessary for him. And I thought Colorado was a perfect spot for him to go. Um, but I guess they're going to run four or five wide there this year. So <laughs> I guess he's uh, the boots out there. Whatever happened there, I do think Ken Dillingham see, looked around his playmakers, you know, at least throwing the ball this year. And, and Mateyer uh, is a nice ad for you. I agree. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball where Brian Ward, I thought, did he did what he could last year, right? He did what he could. I thought it was, a, I'll call it, a sneaky, decent defense. I'm not going to call it sneaky good. I'm going to call it sneaky, decent. And a huge part of the reason why it was good, BJ Green was awesome, man. He was yeah, so man. good. Yep, and he was. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, he has transferred uh, to a different team inside of the conference. But uh, the reality is, I think you still have some guys that can maybe get to the quarterback. I think a huge, huge X factor that has to perform this year is a guy like Clayton Smith, right? Former five-star recruit at Oklahoma, and he was banged up for most of the year last year, but then he really showed out at the end of the year, okay? If he is very good, I think he can maybe take some of that uh, production that is lost. with BJ Because BJ Green was an all-Pac-12 player. He was the only player on Arizona State that was all-Pac-12. So we'll see. CJ Flight, I think, is another one, the sophomore defensive tackle. That's kind of a guy that I think needs to really show improvement and needs to make uh, an impact in the middle there. Yeah, no, you, you mentioned it. I mean, Smith's the guy. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, Prince Debora, right? It, six sacks last year. Dorba, yeah. Dorba, yeah, pretty good for he's, you. He's good. Yeah, had some depth with. Um, Roman Petre from Purdue coming in. Um, Jermon Tapp, right, former high recruit from Texas, which is nice you bring in another Texas guy, Zach Swanson. Didn't get much playing time there, but also a former five, uh, I'm sorry, four star guy there. A um, little bit on the younger side, which is nice for the, the long term, you know, the future of Arizona State uh, defensively. Um, but it's There's a, a lot it's, of bodies. Yeah, you're, yeah you're, but you're bringing in six transfers, which it's this is great that you can do that, but yeah. to me, it's also like concerning where it's like you obviously had a need and you filled them, and we'll see. You know what plays out here? Is it does Jacob Rich Omanga? Does he take a step? We'll see. Um, coming over from in, in state Arizona, right? He was, I guess, okay for them last year, but I don't know. I to me, I'm a little bit skeptical. And, and what they can be in that front uh your front line there. Yeah. We'll talk about skeptical. Uh we move over to the linebacking core, right? I mean, Travion Brown is a loss. Okay. They bring in yeah. Keyshawn Elliott, comes from New Mexico State. Uh Zyrus Fiasu comes from San Diego State. It just to me right now, this looks like a G five room. I like early on, I need to see these guys play at a high level and affect the game. Cause Lord knows Arizona State needs some players to really step up on this team, some new pieces. And these guys all have opportunities, man. They have opportunities in front of them. And they really have a chance. Uh, you, you, you got a really tough schedule. You have a chance to shine, I think, in, in this linebacker spot. My guess is that Keishan Elliott and uh, Zaris Fiasu start. I don't know if you have a different opinion on that. Yeah. The only... Silver lining, I guess, or if you want to talk glass half full. I mean, last year, obviously, yeah, you had Trey Brown. It's pretty, really, pretty good for you. But 
Last year, you do have some returning production in Caleb McCullough, right, in Tate Romney. Right, Romney was a young kid that was forced in there last year. Uh, right. Caleb McCullough's a veteran guy as well. Uh, so at least you've bringing in competition to tr- make an attempt to raise the ceiling of your room at the linebacker position. But to be honest, is like, and I played linebacker right now. Like, you do not want to battle a defensive line in front of you. Like, you want those defensive linemen. You want them to make your life easier. And, and if you're, you know, maybe a questionable or at least a younger, inexperienced at the Big Twelve level, if you're talking about Elliot and Finney, uh, Fiasau, right? You want production and, and and eating up blocks and being in the right spots and and moving guys on the defensive line and not that it won't happen, but it's just like I talked about earlier, like a little bit skeptical. Can it happen? Uh, and especially early on in the season when you're playing winnable games like Mississippi State, right at Texas State on a Thursday, right? Those are games that you maybe you know maybe not favoring against Mississippi State, but the reality is you could still beat them potentially. Or at least you'd like to, and and you're going to figure this out early on. So one room that I'm actually like shocked I'm I I might like this year is the secondary. I don't I don't love it. I don't love it. I think Cole Martin has a chance to be good. I, I'm very worried about um that he'll play nickel right, but I'm really worried about the cornerback position. I will say I'm I'm not so worried uh, about the safeties. I don't think Kamari Wilson hasn't even gotten to campus yet. Is that right? Um, but, uh, or maybe he, yeah. he recently got to campus. I don't know. But uh, so he might be a little bit behind on the eight ball there in terms of, you know, learning that defense. But Simmons played very well last year at that safety he's, spot. But it's pretty good. He's probably like, your best player defensively, right? I mean, 73 tackles last year. Yeah. And I, I throw his running mate in there too, I guess. Well, no, Which BJ Green mate? was probably their, their best player last oh, year defensively. I'm sorry. But, yeah. but um, you're th- right. This though. year. Uh, this year. Oh, this year, yeah, I would say so. I would say but so. I, unless, unless but, like guy like Clayton Smith, you know, that would be up. awesome. That would be, awesome. be awesome. But uh, Zayvon Alford, he's a guy that you might forget about. Um, he was pretty good for USC back in 2021, but he missed 2022 with an injury. Right, he had to sit out 2023 because of a two-time transfer role, I believe. Right, so I mean, yes, he might be a little bit rusty to begin with. He hasn't played in two years, three years now, in 2024, but. At least he's got some experience in that room to pair with Simmons and maybe um, buy time until you can develop and, and really unleash Kamari Wilson uh, in, in your sec- your safety room. But, yeah, I mean, your cornerback room is what happens when you lose Rotor and the NFL, <laughs> add Woods to Michigan State. Like, you're going to – in year two of Dillingham, it's kind of brutal. And look, look, I'd... Terrence Welch, we'll see, former high recruit. <sighs> but if he was not good look. enough to play last year – that's what that, I'm that, saying. That like, room was terrible. Be very like Arizona State fans. I know y'all are very optimistic on LT Welsh, and he was a good get for y'all. Like, not gonna lie, like that is a developmental guy for sure. Just be very careful, all right? Like, I'm expecting early production from a guy like him. I, I caution you to tread lightly with that. Javon Robinson's a guy I would be more optimistic about. Uh, even though he's a little bit younger, or I guess the same grade he's redshirt his freshman year. Um, but he comes over from Washington State with a connection to Brian Ward, your defensive coordinator, who was re- recently at Washington State before he came over here just two years ago. And uh, so at least you have got some connection there. I got Keith, Keith Abney, right, your, your sophomore guy. But, yeah, it's – defensively for Arizona State – you have a lot of bodies. You bring a lot of transfers. You know, you kind of throw in a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And hopefully you hit on some of these transfers or you hit on some pieces here and there, and you can put together a pretty formidable defense. But as we stand right now in July, it would be, you know, it's not something I'm going to be predicting or I'm really going to be counting on uh, this year for Arizona State. Yeah, let's talk about their schedule. Thank God they have Wyoming at home. No, nah, I oh probably wasn't gonna matter God. too much because um, I, they're gonna be running the ball a ton. But thank God they do not have Wyoming on the road because this schedule it's pretty brutal, and they don't get to play themselves. I'm sorry, that's that's part of it, you know. That that's part of it. Wyoming, Mississippi State, Texas State, 
That's your out of conference. In San Marcos, bro. That's that is your out of conference. That is so brutal. And then here's who you draw, right? You miss you or no, you don't miss Utah. Here's who you who's here's who you get in the tech in the Big 12. Texas Tech, Kansas, Utah, o- Oklahoma State, UCF, Kansas State, Arizona. It the only one that you team. missed, really, the only two that you missed were Iowa State and TCU. And instead you got BYU maybe and maybe West Virginia too. But yeah, no thanks. Yeah, maybe. It, here's what I'll what say to you. Brutal schedule. That's why the win totals are four and a half, right? This is probably a five, six win team. But that schedule is just brutal. Last year started out rough too, right? You had the close game against Southern Utah. You lost to Oklahoma State, blown out by Fresno State, and then you got in the conference play and you lost to some teams that maybe you could have beaten with Colorado and California. But then you got into the meat and potato of it with Washington, Washington State, Utah, UCLA, Oregon, Arizona, and they actually won two games in that stretch. But the optimism here, if you start to schedule, you know, two and five, maybe, you know, that's not good. Maybe, maybe three and four, right? But teams that you on your schedule, like to me, that Cincinnati game is killer at Cincinnati. You would love to play them at home, right? And, and, it's kind of brutal. I think the at Texas State is hilarious. I think they genuinely could lose that game on a Thursday, right in week yes. three. Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. And, and that could be a week after you lose to week to to Mike Levy in his first year at Mississippi State, and then you got to go play Joe McGuire at Texas Tech. But you get a buy to regroup. But oh wait, you're playing Kansas and Utah, and yeah, it does not if, get easier from there. With yeah, and if I remember correctly, Texas State was top three in the country last year in tackles for loss, and their defensive line is still pretty good. So. That is scary. That is scary, if you ask me. But yeah, uh, the win total is at four and a half. It's juice to the under. I'm going to lay. Well, I'm not going to lay it, but I'm going to ride with the juice in terms of picking it, right? I'm going to go with the under four and a half. I think they go four and eight. Um, it's not going to fall off like it did last year. Like they had some injuries and they just were not deep enough in that first year to handle injuries. I think they're more handled to, or more equipped to handle injuries this year i just don't think they're gonna find a way to get the five or six wins with the schedule it's just that brutal yeah i'm with you here i'm gonna take the under and i do want to separate you know this term this season from the future of the program which i do believe in. i do believe in kenny tillingham correct yes absolutely and it, the reality is is you kind of got hit in the transfer portal right maybe later than you thought you would with um ed woods and i believe uh bj smith were both and, and the, the wide receiver too um were, were all three of those guys elijah badger were in that second cycle in the spring and there were not a lot of you know good pickings out there for schools like arizona state um to be had and so you couldn't really recover from that and you're seeing that in some weak spots on your team on your roster and again with the tough schedule the grinding of it, the, the tough, the tough away games, it's it's going to be tough. And now here's the thing: I do think this team might be better than last year. They won three games last year. Maybe could have won a couple more, but I, the program's heading in the right direction, right? They're getting their stuff together, athletic department wise. They're recruiting better with with, uh, with Dillingham, uh, but I think we are a year away from from really you know leaping into bowl and then. Uh, actually being, you know, a tough team for people to play in the Big 12 and, and pushing themselves to the upper half of the Big 12. 